Great stuff. Uh, good day to another hike, walk along this beautiful journey that we're walking together. Um, if we look at the, the first leg we walked was the spiritual side. The second one was the psychological. And we're now dealing with the third leg of the journey, which is the social uh, side. And we'll start off with rejection. But before we do that, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time that we can get together. Time to walk this path together. Getting in behind you, Lord. Coming into your shadow, Lord. Abiding in your shadow. Walking in your footsteps. Lord, strengthen us. Give us an understanding. Open our spiritual ears, our soul, and our hearts to understand what it is that you have to say to us today, Lord, as we travel and continue to travel on the straight and narrow in Jesus name we pray this father amen great so let's look at rejection the word of God in 1 Peter in 1 Peter let me just get this yeah 1 Peter 3 verse 9 it says don't repay evil for evil don't retaliate when people say unkind things about you instead pay them back with a blessing Many times you hear the scripture, walk in the opposite spirit. That is what God wants you to do, and he will bless you for it. That's 1 Peter 3 verse 9. The social area of life deals with our relationship with people. God says to love everyone, even your enemies. But when people reject you, do you feel so hurt that you want to hurt them back? Oh, I know many a situation like that in an instance in my life. Everyone gets hurt and rejected by others. Rejection can be defined as knowingly or unknowingly withholding love. You will not be able to avoid being rejected in this world. However, you can change the way you react to rejection. The way you handle rejection will either lead to abundant life of live or a living death. Let's look at this rejection cycle. The following diagram begins with the rejection cycle. It illustrates how you, mu you may react to being rejected. In step one of the rejection cycle, an incident occurs and you think or feel you are rejected or unloved. Have a look at the, the, um, the diagram. Yeah, you see the rejection cycle. It says there, I think or feel rejected or unloved. Rejection can take many different forms. You could feel rejected when people say or do unkind things to you. You could feel rejected when someone you care about ignores or overlooks you. Another painful type of rejection is feeling judged or condemned by others. Rejection can be intentional or unintentional. Question. Describe one specific time when, we, when you were hurt or rejected. Write it down. Another question, what did you think and feel about the incident? In the next diagram, we'll see how uh, you are controlled by thoughts and feelings. At step two of the rejection cycle, you choose how you are going to react. You're going to allow those thoughts and feelings to control me. This step, you make a choice to allow your thoughts and feelings of rejection to control you. You're aware of the fact that you don't like rejection and you don't want to experience it again. When you focus on the negative thoughts and feelings of rejection, they will control you. For example, several people may say something kind to you and one person belittles you. Which comment do you focus on? If you choose to focus on the one rejection, you are allowing those negative thoughts and feelings to control you. Think about it. We, we fall for it every time. What the other person did to you might have been very wrong. But what you choose next determines if you are going to be wrong also. In 1 Peter 3 verse 9 says, Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate when people say unkind things about you. Have a look at this next diagram. In step three of the rejection cycle, you react by rejecting others or trying harder to please. You may even reject yourself. There are two different ways that you might react. Number one, you reject back. Or number two, you try harder to please to avoid being rejected in the future. 
these reactions are the result of the choice you made at step two. You might find yourself at step three so quickly that you may be unaware that there was a step two, but you did make a choice. Rejecting the rejector. The following is the list of how a rejected person may react to his or her rejectors. Check, tick the re reactions you have been or you have seen in your own life. One, I refuse to communicate with them. Number two, I have difficulty tolerating them. Three, I've only, I say only what I think they want to hear. Four, I'm critical and judgmental of them. Five, I spend little time with them. Six, I build emotional walls for self-protection. Point seven, I don't trust them. Point eight, I abuse them physically. Nine, I say hurtful things to them. Ten, I reject anyone who reminds me of them. And eleven, I try harder to get people to accept me. Here's a question. In what other ways have you rejected or withheld love from the person who has rejected you? Galatians 5, 19 and 20, it says, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, which is the flesh, your lives will produce these evil results. Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, and bursts of anger. Here's a question. In what ways have you attempted to avoid reject, rejection by trying harder to please? When you react to rejection by trying harder to please, you will discover you can never do enough. You are focusing on gaining acceptance from others, but what you will experience is hurt folk, loss, and more rejection. James 3 verse 16 says, For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and evil and every evil thing are there. Have a look at this next diagram. Inevitably, your reactions bring on more rejection. This cycle continues until it ends in living death. If you react to somebody by rejecting him or her, then that person will think or feel rejected and react by rejecting you back. Your step three becomes another person's step one. Both of you are spinning down the rejection cycle. Question. Have you seen this pattern of rejection in your relationships? Describe. Galatians 5.15 says, But if instead of showing love among yourselves, you are always biting and devouring one another, watching out, be, beware of destroying one another. The rejection cycle illustrates the outcome of thinking. You reject me, and I will reject you. Another question. What things do you continue to do that brings on more rejection? Living the cycle Living this recycle uh, ejection, the, uh, uh, rejection, the following list describes how someone stuck in the rejection cycle may experience a living death. Check the statements you see in your own life. I take personally everything people do or say. I cling to people who accept me. I am filled with worries, doubts and fears. I feel guilty. I try too hard to please. I'm a perfectionist. I'm perfect. I won't be, if I'm perfect, I won't be rejected. I'm irresponsible and undisciplined. I don't care anymore. I think that life isn't worth it. There's a question. Are you living in the rejection cycle and experiencing a living death? Explain. But this rejection cycle can be reversed. Fortunately, you can stop or reverse the cycle of rejection. This reversal doesn't come by denying or ignoring the rejection from others or by trying harder to please. Rather, the solution is found in making different choices. You choose to believe. Notice in the diagram that step two is, large, is a larger circle. That is because it is the key step to reversing the rejection cycle. 
Rather than choosing to allow your thoughts and feelings of rejection to control you, you choose to believe who God says you are. God says many good things about you. If you are in Christ, He says that you are blessed, chosen, holy, blameless, loved, adopted, free, forgiven, and accepted. At step two, you choose to focus on what God says about you rather than how people treat you. In Romans 8, 31, it says, If God is for us, who can be against us? Have a look at this next diagram, this reversing the rejection cycle. Right, can you see there at point two, I choose to. That is very important what you do over there. If other people are saying things about you that are different from what God says about you, you choose, folk, to believe God. In Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 8, it says, How we praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we belong to Christ long ago, even before He made the world. God loved us and chose us in, His, in Christ to be holy and without fault in His eyes. His unchanged plan has always been to adopt us into His own family by bringing us to Himself through Jesus Christ. And this gave Him great pleasure. So we praise God for the wonderful kindness He has poured out on us because we belong to His dearly loved Son. He is so rich in kindness that He, purchases, he purchased our freedom through the blood of His Son. And our sins are forgiven. He has showed us His, showed us his kindness. We, I, I say again, he has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. That is in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 8. In Romans 5 16 it says, We have the free gift of being accepted by God, even though we are guilty of many sins. Here's a question. Write out what God is saying to you in these verses. What God says is true, folk. Nothing anyone else says will ever change the truth of what He says about you. If you believe what God says, rejection won't control you. By believing who God says you are, enable you to make good choices consistent with your true identity in Christ. Notice in the diagram that the cycle is reversed when you choose to believe who God says you are. Now, rather than reacting by rejecting others or trying harder to please, you can respond by loving others. You are taking action on what God says. The action is that of loving others, even those who have hurt you. Instead of a living death, you experience abundant life. What makes it possible for you to respond in love? To the people who have hurt and mistreated you. First of all, you are deeply loved by God. You no longer require anyone else's acceptance. When you believe this is true, it produces an overflow of love and acceptance towards others, regardless of how they treat you. The second reason you can respond in love to the people who reject you is because you can trust God's control. God will cause even your hurts to work out for the good. In Romans 8 verse 28 it says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purposes for them. Consider Jesus' response to rejection in 1 Peter 2 verse 21 and in 23. Christ, who suffered for you, is your example. Follow in His steps. He did not retaliate when He was insulted. When he suffered, he did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. Jesus was never caught in a cycle of rejection. Jesus lived in the approval of God, not the approval of man. Jesus knew his true identity. He was his father's son, and he knew how much he was loved. He trusted God to use his suffering for good. Jesus chose to love and forgive others, not threaten or reject back. A question here is, are you ready to be set free from the rejection cycle? If so, the following steps may be helpful. Tell God how you have been thinking and feeling unloved and rejected. 
Psalm 62 verse 8 says, Oh my people, trust in Him at all times. Pour out your heart to Him, for God is our refuge. Renew your mind daily with the truth that you are totally accepted by God. In Ephesians 4, 23 and 24 says, Instead, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. You must, or, yeah, you must display a new nature because you are a new person created in God's likeness. Righteous, holy and true. And then you start treating people who reject you the way God wants you to treat them. 1 Peter 3, 9 says, Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate when people say unkind things about you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God wants you to do. And He will bless you for it, folk. God is pleased with you when you love your enemies. In Proverbs 16, verse 7, it says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. I trust this first step on the third leg of the journey has really gripped hold of you. Many of us at some other time suffer rejection. We don't need to continue to suffer rejection. The more you walk uh, in, in the cycle of life following Christ, walking in that opposite spirit, those who reject you don't reject back, but love them and bless them. Let me tell you something. What a freedom walk. God bless you. God bless your families. Father, thank you for this little leg that we've walked out. This is a few first few steps on the social uh, relationships uh, we need to uh, walk in as you teach according to your word. Strengthen us now to continue this walk in Jesus' name. Amen.